back to the show. Uh, I have to say that this was a great beach read. Well, and I have to say that one of Fiona's favorite sayings for a long time has been, I'm not a businessman, I'm a businessman. Okay, Zach I Oma stole it from Jay-Z. Zach O'Malley Greenberg joining us, author of Empire State of Mind. How are you, man? Nice Great. to see you. So tell Thanks us so the story. Me. How did you end up writing a book about Jay-Z? Uh, well, funny story. Um, one day I was uh, sitting in my room, um, home from work, um, horrible fever, and it was really hot, and the air conditioning was out. I was like, going through all my email, and uh, I came across one that seemed particularly junky, and it was like, project opportunity something, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> right. and, and you were about to delete? About <laughs> to delete it, and then I see, you know, Penguin uh, Publisher. On the on the email uh, address heading thing, and I was like, oh, maybe I should actually read this. And so I opened it up, and what it was was an email from an editor at Penguin who was interested in uh, having me do a book on Jay Z. Yeah. So um, well, and you're a staff writer for Forbes magazine, and and right. one of the things that you sort of I, I don't know if specialized in, but you've written about Fifty Cent. Uh, you've written about a lot of these guys, uh, Little John, uh, Little John, Little Lil, John, Little John, <laughs> Fifty uh, but, Cent, but guys who have started in in the music game yeah. and and really sort of taken that and started sure. these business uh, empires and Jay-Z is a great example of that. Uh, what was your perspective going into this? Were you looking business book? Were you looking biography? What was the focus for you on this? Uh, business focused biography. That was kind of, you know, the mandate. That was what uh, the, the publisher wanted, you know, to kind of take apart this, you know, the story of Jay-Z, how he went from street corner to corner office. So, you know, it's, it's kind of um, a biography Pretty, pretty much chronological biography, but it's got a bit of a focus on the business side, and so we uh, dig in. Yeah, you know, how much uh, and a lot of people stuff. might know about Jay Z's past yeah. that he was a drug dealer and that he is a businessman now, obviously uh, making it on every most wealthiest right. list that there is, but a lot of people don't know the in between, what he's done to get there. Uh, and I'm assuming somebody like Jay Z would want to keep street credibility. So, what was it like for you trying to get Jay Z involved in this book? Well, well, that was pretty interesting. Um, you know, I, I thought it would be a slam dunk. You know, uh, he really likes the image of himself as a businessman, and he shouted out the, na the name Forbes. Um, you know, maybe it's you or maybe it's Forbes he was magazine. Talking I, to me, I'm not sure, but, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he shouts it out all the time, and so I, I thought it would be a no-brainer. But um, yeah, I met with his people, and they said, "What's in it for us?" And I was like, "Geez, well." But when you look when you look at his uh, career, kind of in hindsight, it makes sense. That's kind of how he operates. And you know, in the late '90s, that's why he started uh, Rockaware with his business partner Damon Dash. He started this clothing line because um, the clothing line he was rapping about uh, called Iceberg. They were like, um, nah. they, they wouldn't give him an endorsement deal. Um, so he said, "Oh, well, forget that." You see it in vodka. You see it. I, I mean, but I guess he wouldn't yeah. really get anything about a book that somebody else is writing about him. There's no money in it for him. Is that what it well, was? Well, and I think that's why he didn't want to do it. Yeah. So, um, but interestingly enough, you know, shortly after. I I started writing mine, I began to hear rumblings about his book. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which came out, of course. Yep, yep, a couple months before mine. So, uh, uh, yeah. so who did you end up talking uh, throughout this? Because, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, great relationships. There's a lot of broken relationships yep. uh, with a guy as successful as, uh, as Jay-Z. So who did you end up talking to and getting insight from? Well, I managed to talk to some of uh, you know the broken relationships. That wasn't too hard because you know the everybody wants to grind. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but um, you know Jazzo, uh, Damon Dash, um, the Haven Irby. Those are some of the guys who he came up with, um, and helped him get his start in various fields. Um, but uh, you know, I was pleasantly surprised at how many people in the industry were kind of willing to risk right. his wrath. Um, you know, for talking yeah. to me from because being blacklisted by guy. him wouldn't yeah. be an easy thing in the yeah. rap world. Right, right. So you know, uh, Quest Love from the Root. Talked to me. Uh, DJ Clark Kent was one of the people instrumental in helping him get started. Fab Five Freddy um, and some even some record label. Fab executives. Five Freddy had a great. Uh, thank goodness I got that out close. Uh, <laughs> but he had a great story in this about uh, about making a film uh, with Jay that never got released. That, that just. I mean, there's some marvelous insights to who he is and how he does his business in this book. Yeah, I mean, well, so without giving away the whole chapter, yeah. uh, you know, the the you know for for the audience out there, it's basically Jay Z decided to start this um, street basketball team, and it was going to be the best of all time, and they were going to do this tournament in New York in the Harlem. Rutgers tournament, Rutgers, famous, Rutgers, yeah, yeah, and legend, and he got um, you know LeBron James and Tracy McGrady and all these great players on on, on his team, and um, you know, in, in the end. 
It didn't turn out quite the way yeah. he wanted, but he had a, he had a, uh, a film crew in Fab Five Freddy filming this whole thing, and it was going to be a big documentary. And because you know the sort of end result wasn't what he wanted, which was a total complete victory. No documentary. No documentary. Interesting. Wow. And the, another interesting thing I found about reading the book was listening to his music, because you do talk about a lot of his lyrics throughout the book, obviously. But and you know, on the surface, they have meaning, of course. But there's so many hidden meanings in Very what he says contact. when you know more about his business. How interesting interesting was it for you to find out all these little Easter eggs that are in his uh, lyrics? It was great. And yeah, Easter eggs, yeah. I think that's the, the really the right term. I mean... You said that this morning, not me. I'm no, 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 you. Know, <laughs> yeah, he, he really, I think it's kind of a game he likes to play. Um, you know, he really enjoys, I think, putting these, these little nuggets of information in there somewhere. So, you know, for example, uh, Run This Town off, off the Blueprint 3, his uh, latest album. Um, there's a line where he says, I gave Doug a grip, I lost a flip for five stacks. And maybe for the casual listener, you're like, yeah, yeah. sure. And it's some who's <laughs> reference to a deal, right. and you know, like uh, who knows. Yeah. And but actually, you know, in the course of course reporting, um, you know, I, I realized that what he was referring to was when he was trying to get out of uh, the last album on his Def Jam deal. Um, this is I think in 2008. He was about to sign this deal with Live Nation, 10 years, 150 million for touring, recording, all this stuff. But he needed to get that last album out so that he could sign this other deal. So he did this deal with Doug Morris, who was the CEO of Universal at the time, which was the parent company of Def Jam, yeah. and he said, why don't, you know, I want my album back, let's flip a let's coin, flip. and if I win, I get, I, get to, <laughs> I get it for free, and if I lose, I pay you five million for my album and I get to walk. Wow. And so they did the flip, and, they did the flip. and he lost. <laughs> but then, then he went and he sold it to Live Nation for ten million. So Unbelievable. I mean, how much is Jay-Z valued at now? Uh, our last number for Forbes, we had him at 450 million. And what is Beyonce at? Beyonce, we haven't done a formal valuation on her, but I would, I would guess it's somewhere in the same range. Yeah. yeah, she's been doing it not quite as long, but but she's learning the game. And she makes even more than him. And that brings basis. back to, to another aspect of his character that comes through in every moment of this book. Uh, he is an excellent student uh, and a man who picks things up from other people extremely quickly. He's it, sort of like a hermit crab of knowledge. <laughs> yeah, you know, but he does. I mean, <laughs> and the flip side of that is, is sometimes when he absorbs that knowledge, yeah. You're sort of out the door, right? You know, if if he can do it as well as you can, and they're like, what does he need you for? So that was kind of his attitude with with all of his mentors. Uh, yeah. You know, he he, he dash absorbs, and like, Yeah, he just takes in everything that they you know that they have to offer. He absorbs it into his own sort of knowledge base, and um, you know, then when he determines he doesn't need them anymore, he casts them aside. Time. And you know, I mean, it's uh, from an interpersonal perspective, you know, I mean, not not, not great, so great, but from a business perspective, gets to keep more money for himself. So, Unbelievable. You know. Man, I really need to get going on some. <laughs> Four hundred and fifty million dollars. Wait, 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 wait. Are you telling me I'm fired? I'm not a businessman. I'm a businessman. Uh, Empire State of Mind is an read. absolutely great read. How Jay Z went from street corner to corner office. You can get it at bookstores now. Thanks so much, Zach. Zach, thanks, man. Appreciate thanks. it. Thanks for having uh, me. On. We are going to take a break. When we